on Viewpoint. Welcome back to the program. Time now for our political panel. Liberal frontbencher Josh Frydenberg is in our Melbourne studio and Labor frontbencher Matt Thistlethwaite is in our Sydney City studio. Gents, thanks both for your time today. And I'd just like to Thank go you. further to this uh, point about fusion energy, Josh Frydenberg. We've heard there no carbon emissions, uh, essentially no waste, power from seawater. Is it strange that with a technology like this on the horizon on a mass scale, the PM's talking about wanting to dig up coal for decades to come? I oh, know coal is part of the energy mix and uh, it supplies a great proportion of the world's energy but we're absolutely committed to renewable energy and renewable uh, energy technologies and um, that's why we want to see a RET uh, be 20 percent of the production of energy in this country. Renewable energy can comprising 20 percent of energy production but we've seen a fall in energy consumption over recent years and that's why we want to see a real 20 percent target. So we're prepared, Tom, to engage in constructive discussions with the Labor Party on the future of the RET. But it must be said the Labor Party is in a pincer movement here. On the one hand, it's got its blue-collar workers, its union base who are supporting uh, the coalition's plans to protect trade-exposed industries like aluminium. And on the other hand, it's got its so-called green thumb and its, uh, its uh, constituency uh, that uh, would probably find a home on the Greens more than the Labor Party and it's trying to balance those two interests and it's not doing it too well but we certainly have a plan for renewable energy in this country and a real 20% RET target. Matt Thistlethwaite, we've had reports today the Greens are ready perhaps to negotiate with the government. They might allow direct action to be passed or help pass direct action in exchange for keeping the old rate, if you like, the current rate of 41,000 kilowatt hours per year by 2020. Is that the sort of deal Labor is going to be looking at, a quid pro quo? Well, the first thing to say, Tom, is that Labor won't be party to anything that undermines the growth in renewable energy in Australia. Renewable energy is really one of the industries of the future. You've got uh, close to $10 billion worth of investment in the industry in Australia, 24,000 jobs. We want to see that grow, unlike the government. I think the Prime Minister implied this week that if there was going to be job losses in the energy sector, he'd rather see them in renewable energy than coal. I think that completely outlines this, uh, this government's approach to the energy mix uh, in this country. Overnight we've seen the European Union agree to increase uh, their target for reductions in emissions to 40 per cent cut in emissions by, by 2030. Uh, that's because they've got an emissions trading scheme in place. That's because they've got an effective mechanism to promote renewable energy within their economy. Australia is the only developed nation in the world that has gone backwards on this issue by I'll removing get, yeah. a price on and, carbon. And I'll get to that and I'll get to that in a moment, but just on, on the RET, you said uh, Labor wouldn't support anything that stops growth at all. Does that mean no shift at all on 41,000 kilowatt hours? Well, we've said that we'll, uh, we're happy to negotiate, uh, but you can't undermine the integrity of the system, and that is promoting growth in, in renewable energy. Um, now, we're not going to give a running commentary on, on what's going on, but we've said quite clearly we're willing to negotiate, but we're not going to undermine uh, the growth in renewable energy in this country and that's uh, that's a key factor in our policy mix. Okay and Josh Frydenberg that uh, deal that the EU did come to agreement on last night that Matt Thistlethwaite mentioned 40 percent reduction of emissions by 2030 could direct action get to that sort of level very easily and what sort of cost would you be talking about for the taxpayer? Well direct action is a very important policy and we uh, I uh, want to see it uh, get through the Senate and it's a 5% reduction as you know by 2020 and it's a bipartisan target. Let's not beat around the bush here. Labor and the Liberal Party and the Coalition are on the same page in terms of that bipartisan target. Um, but when we're talking about renewable um, energy and the RET, um, let's go back to its original purpose when it was put forward by John Howard when he was in government, which is it's got to be tw a real 20% target. And we've seen declining energy consumption in this country. And, you know, Labor speaks from both sides of its mouth. One minute it's for a carbon tax, next minute it's for an ETS, next minute it's dumping the carbon tax, next minute it wants an emissions right, trading scheme. 
we just want we just just we on this EU just on this EU on. deal, Josh Frydenberg, because mm. this is several billion dollars that direct action's costing at the moment for a five percent cut. So would it be mm. costing eight times as much or more to get the forty percent cut? And is that going to be the sort of thing? Would direct action still be the plan? I guess I'm asking if it was a forty percent target that had to be pursued, albeit somewhat in the future. But that's the Europeans' target. That's not our target here in Australia. It's not the coalition's target. It's not the Labor's target. So it's a bit hypothetical. But if it Tom, had to be ramped up, to be that putting much. those numbers. No, well, you know, again, okay. that's hypothetically speaking. All right, fair enough. We might move on because I do want to talk about a couple of speeches that are going to happen today. One is Bill Shorten's speech. Uh, he's going to tell the Australian Christian lobby that, yes, he does still support same-sex marriage. Matt Thistlethwaite, is this going to be, become something the Labor will campaign on? It will be a point of difference, perhaps, for the party uh, at the next election? Well, Labor believes, uh, or most in Labor, believe in, uh, in same-sex marriage. I certainly believe that uh, it's time for reform in Australia, and I voted in the par Parliament accordingly. Um, Utah, in the United States, now has same-sex marriage. Many of those, uh, those conservative states in the South now have same-sex marriage, and I think the world is moving on. Uh, Australia, again, is well, going to be Would you like to behind. see it become a real, a real cent central part of the policy, just quickly then, for Bill Shorten to ramp this up? Well, at the last election, uh, we took a policy which said that if we were elected, uh, we, would, we would put a, a law to the parliament and, um, and seek to change, change, this, uh, change this issue. And really, I, I'm glad Bill's talking to the Christian lobby today about this because the Christian lobby promote family values and the sanctity of families. And if you believe in families and you believe in the stability of families, then you should believe in same-sex marriage because there's a lot of uh, kids of same-sex couples in Australia, and increasingly that's growing at the moment, whose parents aren't allowed to express their love for each other in the way normal families are through marriage. So if you believe in families, you should believe in same-sex marriage. Josh Frydenberg, Matt Thistlethwaite says states are getting, or Australia is getting left behind. Are you concerned the Liberal Party yeah. could be left behind on this? Well, we don't have any uh, legislation before the Parliament. When there is that legislation, it will come to the Coalition Party Room and then we'll make a, uh, a decision there as to whether it's a conscience vote or not. I've personally supported having a conscience vote uh, in the Parliament on this issue. I'm also conscious that uh, views are changing around the world. Uh, and, you know, I see constituents who sh um, have passionate views on this issue f representing both sides of the argument. So let's wait and see what the legislation looks like uh, and then have the, uh, the, the re relevant discussions at that time. But certainly there are shifting what about, community attitudes. What about, we've heard from the PM saying it's not exactly a priority of his, there are many others, but at mm -hmm. the same time within the area of, uh, well, the area of um, social welfare, you had Kevin Andrews and these certificates, these are vouchers for people to have marriage counselling. So is it mm. a bit of a strange comment to say it's not a priority, that you can't get it done at the same time as other things? Not at all. What he's saying is that, uh, you know, we are uh, waiting to see the legislation and then we'll make a decision at that time in the party room. The Prime Minister has also said that uh, it's for the party room to decide whether or not there will be a conscience vote and, you know, that is something that I'm sure many of my colleagues will have views uh, representing both sides of the argument. So when it comes before the Parliament, there will be the, the, the relevant debate uh, and we'll see wh where it ends up. But, you know, the Parliament has already okay. looked at this issue a few years ago too. Yeah, they have indeed. We might move on to the PM's speech. He's going to be talking about sure. federation today, how the states mm. and the Commonwealth can work better together. Uh, Josh Frydenberg, mm. he's going to say that Victoria, New South Wales, WA get shortchanged on the GST. South Australia mm. and Tasmania, though, he doesn't want to leave them behind either. You can't mm. do both of those things, can you? Well, he's, he's asking the relevant questions. Uh, what should the states have responsibilities for and uh, who should be paying for it? And, you know, whether um, states should be uh, having the powers to, to raise more money in terms of revenue, but also looking at their, their spending requirements. So these are legitimate questions. This is an important speech, Tom. It's the uh, 125th anniversary of Sir Henry Parks's Tenterfield oration in 1889. Um, John Howard is fond of saying if our founding fathers would come together today, 
uh, they wouldn't come up with three layers of government. But that's not about to change. And so therefore we have to make those three layers of government work better. Uh, putting issues on the agenda at COAG like deregulation and better coordination uh, between state and federal governments on a number of issues is really important. But the Commonwealth is responsible for 45% of the revenue that state and federal government, uh, state and territory governments have. So it's a legitimate question to ask um, how do we divide up responsibilities? And the white paper on uh, federation together with the tax white paper will be looking at exactly these issues including the GST okay. carve-up. Matt Thistlethwaite, on that tax white paper, Labor's uh, Chris Bowen, the Shadow Treasurer, has said that Labor will contribute to that. They want this open discussion, have all these things on the table for what will be very forward-thinking sort of policy discussion. Should part of that discussion be things such as negative gearing? Well, we've said that we'll uh, take a constructive approach to, uh, to tax reform in this country, but um, the speech by the Prime Minister uh, really needs to outline how you're going to, to grow the pie. That's really what the, the Prime Minister is implying. He's saying that, uh, that states like uh, Western Australia and New South Wales should get more GST revenue, but it shouldn't be at the expense of states like South Australia and Tasmania. As you rightfully pointed out, how do you do that? How do you do that without increasing taxes? And that's the issue that Josh and his colleagues need to answer. I believe, Tom, that this really is you talk the Prime Minister putting this, putting this issue of raising the GST on the agenda seriously for the first time. And that's something that Labor doesn't support. Increasing the GST is a regressive tax uh, and it, it affects those on low incomes to a greater degree than those on, well, on what high okay, incomes. Okay, so further to that, if you want a bigger pie, why not target those on higher incomes, not to get more money out of their pockets directly, but to stop the perks such as negative gearing? Is that something Labor wants to at least be talking about? No, we're not, we're not saying that at all. Um, Labor went to the last election with, with a series of policies um, that could have increased the pie and, and we're looking at things like high-end super. Uh, those who are earning more than $200,000 a year as an income uh, on the interest in their superannuation balances uh, should be paying more tax. Uh, we had a, a carbon price which was raising about $7 billion in revenue uh, per year which has been wiped out by this government. The minerals resource <laughs> rent tax has been wiped out by this government. Um, if the Prime Minister is saying that he wants more money for New South Wales and WA but not at the expense of the smaller states, he really needs to explain how he's going to do that and I believe that's okay. implying it looking like increasing the GST. <laughs> well, well Matt, I don't quickly, uh, no, conveniently. The... Nick, I just, uh, <laughs> I don't Tom, have that I was just saying just Matt, yet. Yeah, I was just saying, Matt, um, Matt uh, Tom, Matt conveniently forgets that for every tax hike that they uh, commit to the Labor Party, there's actually more spending involved. So it's not leading to any more money in the hands of the states. In fact, they're just handing out okay. more and more money. And that's the real problem with the Labor's debt and deficit strategy. Well, I suppose we'll have to wait and see what the Prime Minister has to say about all this reform today. But for now, we're going to have to leave it there. We're right out of time. Josh Frydenberg, Matt Thistlethwaite, thank you for your time today on Saturday Agenda. And of course, thanks for watching at home and stay with us for the rest of the news, sport and weather.